Hello class, this uh, video lecture covers some basic information about plays and storytelling in general, as well as covering material from Zeta Elliott's play Stash. Okay, so one of the things that we want to make sure that we are understand as we read plays for this section of the course it's always important to remember that plays are meant to be seen and heard. Uh, plays are a visual and auditory medium where you would go sit in a theater and watch the performance. So uh, we are reading the plays, we will not be seeing them performed. So as you read, it's always kind of important to try and in your head envision what the stage would look like, you know, how the actors would look. It is also important to remember that plays are a collaborative medium where the author, director, and actor all work to present a full picture of the performance. The writer of our plays, Zeta Elliott, kind of outlines the structure and the story, but individual directors and actors can all have their input on how a character is presented, uh, how they speak, how they perform, how they look. So, in essence, our reading of Zeta Elliott's plays can't give us the full picture of how drama and theater is intended to be experienced. But it's always important to remember that this is the best we have. So the more that you are able to visualize the play in your own head, the better it is and easier it is for you to understand kind of the story and the characters and their motivation. So as you read, stash and all of the plays for the semester, you will see two key components. The first will be dialogue. Dialogue are the written composition in which two or more, or maybe even one, characters are presented as talking. Right? Um, anything that is a part of a dialogue will be said out loud to the audience. The audience could hear it. Right? Even if other characters may not be able to hear it, you as the audience would be able to, to hear and see that actor say those lines. The next part of a play, and this might be done in parentheses or brackets, are these stage directions. The stage directions are instructions to the director and actor on how to perform certain parts of the play. So if you look and read the plays, one of the things you may see is a stage direction to have the character pause and think before speaking their lines. That would be the uh, author of the play telling the director and actors that this uh, performance needs to be done in a certain way. This actor needs to pause and act like they're thinking before saying the dialogue. So dialogue is things that you can hear or be, uh, and is being said by the characters. Stage directions uh, guide and instruct the performance of the actors in the scene. Now, let's focus on the plot. Throughout this semester, we will use this word a lot, plot. You may have heard this word, you may not. At its core, you can think of the plot as stuff that happens in a story, the stuff that happens in the play. All right? Plot can be actions, plot can be the results of those actions, plots can be dialogue, plots can be thought. If, if you're reading a story where you can hear the thoughts of a character as they're putting together a plan. The plot is the most basic level of reading the text. It is able to understand simply what happened in the story you are reading. One of the things that you should be able to do and track on your own as we grow throughout the semester is be able to understand the plot of everything you read. What happens? Who are the major characters? What did they do? Why did they do it? And what are the consequences of those actions? Next up is a term of character. When we talk about character, we are talking about a person uh, in a novel, play, or poem. A character doesn't necessarily need to be a human. If you watch many uh, Disney cartoons or Disney films, those characters are often bunnies, animals, what have you, but they are still the characters. 
Okay. If you look at the image on the slide, you have a nice sort of breakdown of author to narrator and character. Right? So one of the things to really keep in track as you write about what the characters are doing, don't necessarily think that that is what the author is thinking or saying. All right? uh, you want to make a distinction. The author has created the character to do or say this particular action. All right? So keep them separate as you write and think about what you read this semester. Character types. Throughout the year, we will have three key character types to track. We will have the protagonist, and that is the person who is the main figure or the most prominent figures of the story. Right? The protagonist is the one that will have a goal to achieve, but the protagonist does not necessarily mean the good guy. The protagonist of a story could be a villain or someone who you find morally reprehensible, but they are the ones guiding the action. Right? Opposed to the protagonist is the antagonist. The antagonist is a person who is hostile or actively seeks to stop the protagonist. You can think of the antagonist more classically as an adversary. The antagonist can also be a force of nature. A storm could be trying to stop the character from achieving their goal. Finally, the last group of characters are background characters. These are small characters that help move the plot forward, but the story does not pay a lot of attention or give you a lot of focus on who they are. So in Stash, the play that we have read, the protagonist would be Charity, the antagonist would be Constance, and the background character would be the Doctor. Next up, we're moved from plot elements to thematic ways stories work. The first of these is called a symbol. We will trace these a lot in all of the material we read throughout the year. A symbol is a type of figurative language where the writer doesn't use a literal idea to explain what they are talking about. We use symbols all of the time whenever we are talking or whatever sort of cultural idioms that we use. For example, we often use the phrase, the light bulb went off. When we use that phrase that the light bulb went off, that means that I have understood a concept. It literally doesn't mean that a light was turned on or off. It's a symbol for the act of understanding an idea, of finally getting a concept. Stories, uh, plays, poems especially, will use symbols to present their themes and ideas. They will use figurative language to present an idea that doesn't just match the literal item or language being told to you in the story. Symbols are often very cultural based, uh, such as a country's flag is often a symbol for what people say that country stands for. Religion uses symbols all the time to, to represent the faith and precepts that underline the beliefs. Um, and then we have a whole bunch of other things. Uh, video games use symbols all the time. Comic book characters, superheroes use symbols. Okay. For the instance, one of the common symbols throughout many stories is the idea that light as a symbol for knowledge and darkness a symbol for the unknown or what is dangerous. We will see that throughout many, many, many stories that we read. So take a moment, pause the video, and answer the questions you see on the screen. You should be able to break down the plot of the play Stash. Ask yourself, what happens in the play? Who are our major characters? Where is the play set? By that, where does the play take place? What is the goal of our major characters, especially our protagonist, Charity, and our antagonist, Constance? By the end of the play, who has, has, who has achieved their goal? Who has had their goal thwarted? Pause the video, 
Take a few minutes and answer these questions. All right, welcome back. So one of the things that I want you to focus on in the play stash is that Charity's actions towards her father are symbolic. It is important to know that Elliot is not actually suggesting physical violence towards abusers. The father's genitals, which Charity has castrated, is a symbolic act of her taking back the violence, taking back the symbol of a toxic, dangerous, violent masculinity and removing it from society. Right? We can prove this through several things Elliot, uh, Elliot uses, separate pieces of, of evidence Elliot uses in the voice of her character. According to the doctor, we are told that Charity didn't try and hide her acts. She wants everyone to know what she did to her father, and she wants everyone to understand, as she tells Constance on page five, that this action was symbolic. Again, she tells Constance that she didn't want to bury the genitals because she feels it would spill into the soil and it might multiply, meaning that if she simply took the symbol of her father's violence, the symbol of this violent masculinity, and put it in the ground, it would spread to other men. Pierre Bredeau has said that symbolic language should be viewed not only as a means of communication, but also as a medium of power through which individuals can express a desire for change in their society. So I would suggest that you think of Charity's actions as her trying to express a desire for a change in society. Ask yourself this, how does Charity's killing and removing her father's penis represent a symbolic action? In terms of the play and the evidence that you can trace, this symbolic action is taking back a dangerous and toxic form of male power and domination and removing it from society. It is a public act that fights back against the patriarchal violence that Charity and Constance experienced. Charity is literally performing a symbolic castration, a symbolic action that will remove this dangerous part of society and remove it for good. She does not tell anyone where it goes. She does not tell anyone where it is. She has literally taken it, removed it, and in essence, destroyed it. If we continue on our symbolic analysis of the play, we can see that even the names Zeta Elliot as our author uses are themselves symbolic. Charity. What does charity mean? Charity can be seen as an act of kindness that is done without the expectation of a gift or any sort of positive response. Charity performs this action. She, re she performs this symbolic action of removing this terrible violence from society without expectation that she would be praised or uh, given a gift for it. In fact, she will be sent to prison for it. And then if we look at her sister's name, Constance, this is similar to the word constant, which means to keep the same or unchanging. Constant's reaction to the father's abuse keeps the system of abuse in place. Her actions did not change the society for the better. She did not commit a symbolic action that would help others. Charity's action, however, is a charity towards society. She has done a grateful act without the expectation of a gift. So not just as the uh, symbol of the father's genitals, a symbol of uh, sort of a, a powerful action of improving society, Zeta Elliot even uses the names of her characters to express a symbolic language and express the meaning of the play. So the value of this symbolic action, right? Charity and Constance have two different reactions to the abuse suffered at the hands of the father. Constance says that her letter writing and burning the letter was as symbolic as Charity's actions. But yet, when asked by Charity, what did it do? Constance tells her nothing. Charity then mocks Constance by hitting her with a quote from The Color Purple, 
which helps underline that Constance burning up the letters was not a positive action, was not a truly symbolic action, because it didn't express a desire to change society. Charity's action by removing the dangerous part of her father, by removing a dangerous part of society, is a symbolic action that seeks to change the values of society, making it better. Removing the act and danger of a violent and abusive masculinity. So as we see, at the end of the play, Elliot has Charity say that she is a bad negress. Charity st states these lines to help underscore that she wants everyone to know the action she did. She wants everyone to recognize the symbolic act she did of removing the violent aspect of society and not giving it back. Remember, in the play, the doctor never learns what happens to the father's genitals. Right? Uh, Charity has completely removed and excised it from society. This symbolic action is what Elliot has as her theme. She says that we, as a society, must work, like Charity, to remove the violent aspects of abuse, especially uh, sexual violence. And that in doing this action, we must do it as an act of charity, without expectation of a gift and reward. Only by speaking out and being public about our desires to remove this can society change. If we stay like Constance, nothing will ever change. The cycle of violence and abuse will continue. Society does not get better. So at its core, Stash is a play calling you, the reader, to perform symbolic actions, speaking out, however it may be, that seek to remove this violent and abusive and toxic part of society and remove it from ever. Don't take the power for yourself. Don't do anything. We excise it and get rid of it. Thank you for next week. Please read the play Quality. By the end of this week, please complete Discussion Board 1, Writing Quiz 1, and any extra credit assignments.